All right, this is uh, question number five on 2013 FRQ for AP Calculus AB. Um, we have these two functions right here. There's the graph. Um, you're not allowed a graphing calculator on this one, but on our test for this particular type, you probably will get one. But for this, you're not allowed a calculator because it's a number five problem. So if you're looking at this, how would you know which of these graphs that a graphing calculator is F and which is G? Well, can you tell this one is a happy parabola? So can you tell by that, the happy parabola, wouldn't that be this graph right here? So couldn't you tell the F is going to be right there? So that would mean the other is G. It's kind of hard to tell which one's cosine by this little segment, but it's easy to tell the squared is that one. Now, there are other ways of doing it. Couldn't you also plug one into both functions and see which one comes up with that value? So if you didn't have a calculator, you could do that to find out which one's F, which one's G. That's essential. The first question, though, is find the area of R. To find the area of R, you need to see the interval of this piece. And then, so you're going to make an integral of that interval. So the area is going to be integral. The interval goes from 0 to 2. So we're going to go from 0 to 2. Now the question here is, to find the area between these curves, between G and H, you need to find this height. You need to find that height right there. Because once you find those heights that are perpendicular to the x-axis, you will find the integral will sub up all those heights. So how do you find the length of that green line? You have to use the functions f and g to do that. And hopefully you can say, see that, that you can, to get that line, you're going to take the bigger function, which in this situation is g, and aren't you going to subtract f, the smaller function? So hopefully you can see, to get that green line, the segment in between the two curves, aren't you going to take the, aren't you going to take the bigger curve minus the smaller curve, which would be f minus g or g minus f? Isn't g the bigger? f the smaller. So this is going to be the integral of the bigger is g, so g of x minus f of x. Don't forget to put dx. So it's very important you write that to start with. Then you're going to do that. We're going to solve it. Now, just to save time, I know this problem does tell us to do it by hand. But I'm going to use a calculator because on our tests we're going to use calculators most of the time on this one. Could we integrate this and this by hand? Plug in 2 and 0. Yeah. If you use your calculator, there's a special feature on your calculator for the inspires that you simply find the area bounded between 0 to 2, and it will pop out an answer instantaneously. You just got to set this up, stick it in your calculator, boom, done. And when you do that, your answer will be, um, OK, the answer, if you do it by hand, is 6 pi minus 4 over 3. If you do it by hand, meaning non-calculator, you get this. So that would be the one if you did it by hand, meaning non-calculator. If you did it on calculator, it becomes a squiggly line, because it's an about. Um, and it would be about 3.759 if you used your calculator. Again, we could have done this without the calculator. And it actually wants you to do that, because it's problem 5, but I skipped that. For this next problem, problem two, write but do not evaluate the integral expression for the volume generated for r is rotated around y equals 4. So we're going to go y equals 4 right here. Boom, right there. Now, let me erase this real quick. Erase that. It's not erasing. So we're revolving around this right here. To revolve around that, y equals 4 is the line we're evolving around. What we're going to do is set up an integral for this. So the integral for volume is going to be, you want to put for equals, you want to put pi on the outside because you're doing circles. And it's going to be a washer. Hopefully you'll notice you're going to have an outer and an inner radius on this. And when you revolve it, it's going to have a hollow shape inside. So you're going to have a pi out front, and there's going to be two integrals. So you're going to have sorry, two pieces, an outer circle 
pi r squared minus an inner circle, pi r squared. And then since the, my circles are going to be going this way, perpendicular to the, I mean, perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going this way along the x-axis, we're going to have a dx. Now, what is the interval? Well, the interval for it is going to be from 0 to 2 again. So we still have 0 to 2. And this is pi r squared and pi r squared. We have two circles, an outer and an inner circle. Now, for the outer circle, from this green line, you should see your outer circle goes to f. So my outer circle, my outer radius, looks like that. My inner radius would be that. So if I take an outer circle area, pi r squared, taking an inner circle, pi r squared, and subtract the two, I would get my donut or washer shape. Now the problem is, how do you get this green length and this red length using f's and g's? That can be a little difficult. Because doesn't f really give us that length right there? f gives us this, but I want the green. But isn't the whole length 4? So isn't that green length really 4 minus the blue to give us the green? So we're going to take 4, the whole thing, minus the blue, which is f, that will give us the green. So it's going to be 4 minus f of x will give us our green length right here. Now for my other one, I want the red length. To get my red length, well, doesn't g give us this? G gives me this blue, but I want the red. So is the same idea work there? Aren't you going to take the whole 4 minus the blue gives us the red? So we're going to do 4 minus g of x to give us that red piece. So this is the red. That gives us the red length. This function right here gives us the green length. And the pi r squared pi r squared is the circles. And if you take a bigger circle minus a smaller circle, you get a washer area. And then the integral interval sums up those washers from 0 to 2, making a three-dimensional shape, which is hard to visualize. So this right here is your answer to B. All right, for the last problem, C, I want to find the, sorry, the region R, again, same old R, and for the solid... Uh, we're going to make cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis that are squares. That's important to underline squares. So they're going to be square cross-sections. And I want to write it, but do not evaluate, which is kind of nice. We're just writing again, but don't evaluate, because it would be hard without a calculator. So here we go. I want to do perpendicular cross-sections to the x-axis. So what you should know is your cross-sections look like that. That's the cross-section. Those are perpendicular to the x-axis. So how do you get those lengths? Well, we'll see. And by the way, they're also going to be squares off of that. So our shape is going to be a square. And the question then is, isn't this blue length going to be the base of this square? So that blue length right there is the base of the square. And if it's a square, it won't also be the same height? So once I find the base here, aren't I going to multiply by the same thing here? And then with the integral, sum up those squares. So that base, how do we get that base length? Well, you should see it as a bigger length minus the smaller length. If we take g, which is the green, minus the f, won't that give us the blue length between? So the base of this is going to be g of x minus f of x. So won't the height be the same length? If that's, that's the base, won't the height also be g of x minus f of x? And so won't the area of this shape, the area of this square, is just going to be those two times each other? And then don't we just integrate it on the interval 0 to 2? So my final answer for volume of this one is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of the area of that shape, which would be g of x minus f of x squared times itself, dx. That would be the area of square. These are squares over this interval. And that, if you had a calculator, or you could find the value. You could do it by hand. It would be kind of annoying.